Object oriented programming with Java part one exercise walkthrough. Um, the source of these lessons or the source of these exercises is from this MOOC by, I think it's from Finland. And there's some information here. The course is on a new server at this link. And you can check that out. Um, the new version is in Finnish. Uh, we're going to be using the old version. And what they have is they have some lessons here. The link uh, is here. Uh, you can see that or you can Google it. And we're going to be taking a look at the week one uh, programming exercises. So there's some really good uh, yeah, explanations here and things to walk you through some ideas about Java, get you started on the basics. And then what they have is they have a bunch of exercises for you to try out. So exercise one, all the way down through you know whatever that number is. So I'm going to walk you through uh, most of the exercises. There's a few that require some external files, which we won't be able to use. But uh, yeah, this will uh, kind of give you a nice walkthrough and an idea how to do some of these things. So let's get started, and I'm just going to go to it. So the first one is exercise one, and you are to basically create a program that prints your name to the screen. And so I'm going to go over to the repl.it uh, online Java compiler, and this is a very nice uh, website that you can use. Uh, this avoids problems with you know, trying to set up your environment and everybody's computer is a little different and this and that. Um, so this will just give you a, a nice baseline for us to do a little bit of uh, Java exploration. So in Java, if you want to print a statement to the screen, we use something called system.out.println. So I'm going to call this real quick exercise one. And this is name. And so I'm going to print out my name, which is Christian Thompson. And so then I'm going to hit run, and we should see that name appear over there. Okay, number one is done. Let's scroll down to number two. Exercise, hello world. Create a program that prints out the following. Hello world and all the people of the world. Okay, so no real difference to the last program. This is exercise two. And actually, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to get rid of these because that, that's going to take forever. Um, so the exercise it says hello world exclamation point and again system dot out dot print ln and and notice there's some parentheses here and all the people live people of the world parenthesis and always end your line with semicolons. Now if you haven't seen my introduction to Java uh, basic tutorial. I would watch that first because it explains a lot of these things in general. This is actually walking you through all of the exercises. So let's run that and see what we get. Okay, there we go. That was exercise two. Now they'll hopefully get a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to go down to exercise three, spruce, and I'm going to click on that. And it says create a program that prints the following. So we've got a little, uh, looks like a Christmas tree to me. And there's one asterisk on the first line, then three, et cetera, et cetera, down to the bottom. So thinking about this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six lines. And the widest is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so uh, I'm kind of a, as I always like to say, I'm kind of a lazy person. Uh, I like more efficient, depending on how you want to look at it. So I'm going to say we have six lines across. So two, three, four, five, six, I should, or rather down. And then we're nine across. So that means that the first asterisk is going to be in the middle of nine, which is, oops, which is going to be four spaces. And I am in ABC. So one, two, three, four. Don't know why it's doing that, but we'll figure out in a bit. And. Okay, one, two, three, four. Why is it doing that? Two spaces appeared. Anyway, uh, let's. Okay, so one, two, and then asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. One, two, three, four. Two. Okay, I think that looks about right. Two, asterisk, like that, and then one. Okay, you see how it's lining up pretty well. Six, seven, eight, nine, and then again in the middle. One, two, 
And I think that's centered, so let's run that and see what happens. And there we are, I got my nice little Christmas tree coming up on the screen. Okay, so now we're on to number four, exercise four. So I'm just gonna be scrolling down through here. It's called varying variables. Um, now this says there's an exercise file. I'm just ignoring the fact that that exists. And it says, this is what you're given. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do this part where it says change the program in the specified places so it will print the following. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use three different variables. This is going to be an integer because there's no decimal place. This is going to be a double because there is a decimal place. And this is gonna be a string because it's textual data. And so I'm gonna use that to print all these things out. So let us erase that. And so the first one was what we'll call is num of chickens because it's the number of chickens. Notice the camel casing, small n, big O, big C, okay, number of chickens equals, and we were given 9,000 for the output. So again, 9,000 is an integer. That's why this says int. Next is the weight of the bacon, and it is uh, weight of bacon, and that equals, let me go back because I forgot that one, uh, 0 0.1 kilograms. I think we should have more bacon. I'm going to say one kilogram because I like bacon a lot. Well, no, I got to tell you what, I'll stick to what it says so we don't get confused. And then finally we have string. I wasn't sure what to call this. I called it tractor description, even though I have no idea what Zetor, Zetor means, but that's what they have. Maybe a Finnish word. Can you notice uh, on here, these are coming up as underlined with green squigglies. Um, there's no syntax error here or anything like that, but we can see what it says is the value of the local variable is not used because we haven't actually used it later in the program because we haven't written the program. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get my system.out.println working here. And it was chickens and semicolon. And then we had, okay, it's hard to type and talk at the same time. And actually I'm gonna copy that because I'll be using it a lot and get rid of that because I'm using it a lot. <laughs> okay, so it says chickens, and I have to print chickens, and in this case, we've used num of chickens. Now, no, probably your IDE is bringing this up, so I can just hit enter to complete the text. And then we've got um, bacon, oops, bacon, and in kg. So a kilogram is 2.2 pounds for those of you from the United States and weight of bacon. And then again, our next thing is uh, tractor. And I forgot the colon, but uh, there we go. And then I used tractor description. Description for that one. And then what we have, we have a space. Um, and what I can do is put a blank line there. And then this one is says, in a nutshell. So it's just all of those things again. And so, again, since I've already typed it in here, I'm just gonna copy that and delete the lines I don't need. And so I don't need to reprint bacon and I don't need to reprint a tractor. Yeah, I'm going to run that and see what happens. And have a drink while we're at it. Okay, so you can see we've got chickens, 9,000.1 kilograms of bacon, a tractor, Zator, whatever that means, and then the same information in a nutshell. So let us move on to number five. Um, this is a pretty straightforward one where we are calculating. So we're doing some stuff with math. And... We are creating a program that counts how many seconds there are in a year, um, assuming it is not a leap year with 365 days. So I'm gonna go back to my editor. I'm gonna get rid of all this stuff because we don't need it. And I'm calculating the number of seconds in a year. So thinking about that, that's gonna be what type? 
So, so far we looked at integers, doubles, uh, booleans, possibly, and strings. So because it's a number without a decimal, I'm going to use an int, and I'm going to call my variable seconds in year. Okay, again, note the camel casing, so capital I, capital Y, equals. So I'm just going to do the entire calculation here. So there are 365 days in a year times 24 hours in a day times 60 minutes in an hour times 60 seconds in a minute. And that will give us our answer. So I can do system.out.print ln and there are note the space there plus quote oops plus seconds in year plus quote space seconds in a year and don't forget the semicolon at the end now note this is not a hard enter I'm just gonna I could expand that, but let's just keep this over here for now. And it's just showing it on the next line. So if I run it, we can find out how many seconds there are in a year. And it's something kind of interesting to think about. Okay, wow, that's a lot of seconds. Let's see, it's 31,536,000 seconds. So think about what you're gonna do with those seconds. Moving on, uh, exercise number six, addition. This is pretty straightforward says create a program to calculate the sum of two numbers. At the beginning of the program, two variables are introduced and those variables hold the values of the numbers to be summed. Okay, so we have five plus four equals nine. And this is a pretty, uh, pretty easy one. So uh, again, five and four are gonna be integers. So they don't have decimal places. So I'm gonna say int. I'm just gonna use x equals uh, five in this case. We'll say int y equals four. Then we'll say int z equals x plus y. So we're practicing addition. And then this is a very simple thing to uh, add the print statement. And we'll say system.out.println, print line, print line, what do you want to call it? Uh, and it's, the format was x, the number, quote, this is where it gets a little confusing because we're, we're actually printing pluses and then using pluses to concatenate. Uh, X plus Y plus quote equals space. Um, notice the spacing there. And plus Z. And that should do it. Notice the little red lines were appearing and disappearing. We got a little red line here. So you can see I made a mistake. I forgot the plus here. So it's the value of X with the actual literal string uh, of the plus sign then y, then the equals. Let's run it, and we should see five plus four equals nine. Okay, very good. Moving right along. They are now on to number seven, multiplication. Okay, it says, create a similar program uh, to the previous ones, except it multiplies. Uh, now, I'm not gonna go over and do the whole program over again, um, but notice the values are different. 2 times 8 equals 16. So I'm going to say x equals 2. Again, it's an integer. Say y equals 8. And z equals x times y. And then here I'm just going to put the asterisk to represent multiplication. And hit run. And there we go. 